Good morning, good morning, good morning, True Vine. Good morning. Amen. As people are coming in, you know, all it takes is two little raindrops. And um, yeah, <laughs> but God is still good. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. And so welcome to those who are on our Zoom, uh, not our Zoom, our face, uh, Facebook Live. We're so glad to have you here this morning, and we are excited about what God is going to do. I know there's a lot that has gone on this week, yes. but God is still in control. Amen? Doesn't matter. He is still in control. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Come on, stand to your feet as we welcome the presence of the Lord. We learn this morning that God is omnipresent, so he is everywhere all at the same time. And so it doesn't matter whether or not we are aware of it. He's already there. But we want to acknowledge his presence and ask him to bless us today and during our time with him and, and with the word going forth and the songs going forth. And we want God to be glorified. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God, giving us a brand new day. In spite of all that we see, God, that's going on around this country, you are still sovereign and you're still God. For that, God, we say thank you, God. Now, God, we know that you're already here. But God, we just want to acknowledge your presence and thank you for being with us this morning. And God, we pray that the indwelling presence that is within us, oh God, the Father would worship you in spirit and in truth today. We thank you for the word that we go for in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. As the choir
we just want to welcome, I don't know, I think we maybe have a visitor here. If you're visiting for the very first time, um, would you just raise your hand? We want to make sure, I know, but I think we have maybe a visitor. Yes, that's also, amen. Come on, True Vine, let's give them a True Vine welcome. Amen, amen. So glad to have you here on behalf of Pastor Jack A. Crane. I'm Lady Crane in our ministerial ministry, uh, as well as our deacon ministry. Thank you so much for joining us today. And for those who are repeated visit, thank you for coming back. And, and we just pray that God would do something extra special in your life today. And as we, uh, they said, come on in, take a seat. We acknowledge the presence of the Lord here today. And so he is in this house. His presence is here today. And so we're excited. So again, we thank you for being here. For those that have joined us online, please be sure to just put in that chat box, first time visitor, or something to let us know. If you'd like for us to follow up with a phone call, leave your number if you don't mind, uh, or you can call our church as well. So, But we are excited about you being here, whether you're here in person or here on our Facebook Live. So again, as our worship uh, ministry comes before us, we just thank God for you being here today. Amen. Good. Really, I really love you. 
been so faithful Not because I've been so good He's always been there for me To provide my every need He was there when I was lonely He was there through all of my pain from the rain oh, oh, oh and it was you he made my life complete you are to me my everything and that is why I sing
Jesus loves you. Come on, I love you, everybody. I love you. Come on and stand to your feet. today. Come on and worship the Lord. Come on and worship God. I know a lot is going on in our community, but we can't get distracted that God is the beginning, the middle, and the end of everything that we do. And we got to trust the Lord today. Do you trust the Lord today? How many trust the Lord today? I know I trust him with everything in my heart. Listen at this. situation that's going on we need to see peace glory to your name God I said there'll be peace glory glory oh peace be still oh can you sing that peace can everybody just sing with us peace
Bible said he'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. And may the peace of God. You know what the Bible says? And he will keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind that stayed on. Anybody got a mind that stayed on Jesus? nation and our community, you may be seated, our nation and our community is hurting uh, much of it, kind of really hit home in the Metroplex when we had to deal with that shooting at Pasco High School and uh, visual that uh, we had this past, this past week and uh, this past Thursday. And thank God for, uh, we have a third service, Hispanic service, five o'clock. Pastor Segura, that pastor that oversee that service, uh, uh, went with me, accompanied me over there to minister to those families of that young Hispanic young man who was killed uh, senseless. So it's been a roller coaster week, uh, kind of for me, and being kind of close to these what we've experienced across our nation uh, with these uh, Gestapo tactics. You know history, you know who Gestapo was. It was Hitler's secret police that would persecute people, and particularly the Jews. And uh, we, we, we've been experiencing that for quite some time in our nation. And the only answer God give us is to draw near to him. And he'll draw near to us. So I've had, I've had some brothers to pray, brothers know I got to have praying men around me uh, uh, at all costs. Thank God for Paul and Brittany. Paul's here today. He's one of our men. But I've asked these brothers to come, uh, uh, Minister George Holmes and, and Minister Malone, both uh, here today. They're going to uh, pray. Uh, Minister Malone's going to pray. George prayed at 730 service. And uh, Minister Malone's going to pray this service. Because I just believe in, if I've been preaching about Nehemiah and how he prayed, how I many of you know God has no respect to persons? James says, a man just like me, if we pray that prayer, that he'll hear our prayer. So they're going to come and pray because they know where my heart is when it comes to our nation of people. And it seems like black lives don't matter. It didn't matter in the first place to some folk. And what we're doing now to ourselves, how I many of you know it don't matter to some of us? But we need to pray for everybody, particularly our community. Amen? Because we're the community who's hurting right now across this nation. And the only answer is Jesus. Did you know that the words of the song that I'm glad I went to be to you? Jesus is the answer for the world today. And above him, there's no other. Can you give a God a praise because Jesus is the way? Come on, give him a praise while these brothers come. Truvine, everybody, I don't need to repeat what I said this morning, but everybody had a chance to see a, 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 a just a, a, a beating uh, that I don't think the world uh, can understand. You know, we always say black lives matter. Do they really? When they see us beating each other like we beat each other and treating each other like we treating each other, they feel like, hey, that's the norm. But the devil is alive. I just want everybody just to be, be silent right quick. I got just one thing I want to say, and then I'm going to give this to Minister Malone. Everybody just be silent. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, have your way today. Jesus, we need you today. Jesus, don't ever leave or forsaken us. Jesus, we need you today. go to God in prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Father, 
come to you praying, O Heavenly Father, for the nation, O Heavenly Father. We pray for everyone in this nation, O Heavenly Father. We say a special prayer for those individuals, for those individuals in, that were killed, the individual that was killed in Memphis, Heavenly Father. We say a special prayer for those families, for those that are represented for those families, O Heavenly Father. We ask that you will give them the authority, O Heavenly Father, to represent you. We come to you, Heavenly Father, thanking you, Heavenly Father, for all that you've done for us here at True Vine. We know that you are all faithful to us, Heavenly Father, and we ask us to forgive us of our sins, Heavenly Father. I come to you right now, Heavenly Father, asking you to bless this, this pastor this morning, Heavenly Father, let the words that he has come from his heart, Heavenly Father, because we know that you have, you've given him leadership over this, over this church here, and we know that everything that he says will be coming from you. Forgive us of our sins, O Heavenly Father, and thank you for giving us the, the, the true wit to be here with you and, and being faithful, Heavenly Father. Forgive us of our sins, O Heavenly Father. We acknowledge you, Heavenly Father, and we thank you for today's day and last night's lying down. Continue to bless this church, Heavenly Father, as you've done over the years. Now, Lord, as we leave this place after church, we ask that you stay with us and stand by us. Continue to bless Pastor Crane and the word that he brings to you, that it come from, from the heart, and we know that all thank, that he's faithful to you, Heavenly Father, and he just want to thank you. In the name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all. The flowers withered, but God... We know that nothing fades away in your, in your kingdom, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. All I know to do in times like these and what the old church and our grandparents and forefathers used to utter. I need you can remain seated. The old, if you know it, help me. I need thee. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I, I need thee. Then they used to say, Oh, bless. They made it personal. Me now, my Savior. They said, Anybody remember that? To, ooh, to thee. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give the Lord a praise all over the house. Let everything that had breath, come on, give him a praise. Give the Lord a shout out. He's still God and he's still good in spite of the roller coaster time that I had this week. He looked beyond my faults. He, he watched over my children. He, he looked over the children that, he, that was in the community. He brought us you back to the house of prayer, safe and sound. He deserved and desire a praise. Come on, let there be praise in his house today. I thought I'd check the barometer in the house. I don't want to be a part of the frozen chosen. I want to be in a place who don't mind giving God some glory. Telling the Lord, thank you. I, I, I can't help but tell the goodness of the Lord. If God has done something for you this week, you ought to stand on your feet and tell the Lord, thank you. For all that he's done for you. Thank you. Let the redeem of the Lord. Come on, talk to me. Say so. Amen. Amen. While you're standing, first Peter have a word uh, for you and I in this. This was suffering from grief and all these emotions and pain and, and uh Pain from my past. Uh, some of us are still experiencing pain even in the pews. Yes, 
Uh, but, but, but God, listen, I'm telling you, there's a word today. Uh, one thing about this believer's walk is that we're soldiers in God's army. And whenever you in an army, you're in a fight. And whenever you're fighting, there will be casualties along the way. But the good thing about the casualties of God's army, listen, we leave out of this temporal life into that eternal life. And so we don't, listen, we don't cry as if we have no hope. Because those of us who will die in the Lord, the Bible says, blessed is the man who died in the Lord. But one day we'll reap our reward. And so today's sermon is going to simply be talking about how you and I, uh, I, I don't know if they told you, when you got saved, uh, it, nobody should have been telling you that it was going to be a walk in the park all your life. Or you're going to be entertained. Uh, 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 as a, Jesus said, as a matter of fact, he said, blessed are they, I'm glad I went to be to you, blessed are they who were persecuted for righteousness sake. Why? Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Persecution, you all, comes with the package. It's part of the price of our ticket of salvation. And, and as a matter of fact, I'm worried about anybody who's never persecuted. And so, uh, we're, those of us who have the church of God, and I shared it again, I shared it with, 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 you know, with the, uh, all, all of the churches and denominations a week or so ago uh, at the Martin Luther King celebration. I had to remind us and I had to remind them who didn't look like us. I said, I'm telling you right now, we're celebrating king, but there's a king bigger than king. There's a king of kings. And if king was here, he'll tell y'all, there is a lord of lords. Dr. E.K. Bailey said, whenever people begin to prompt you, put you on a pedestal, he said, have enough Jesus in you to point him to Christ so that you don't take the glory. Come on, talk to me, y'all. And I believe that's what's happening. That has happened to the church. All these years of before COVID, pro-COVID, years of entertainment, we were having all this, and we were glorifying each other in God's church. Here in the text, Peter writes to a suffering people, a suffering church. And he gives us some directions today according to God's word that, listen, suffering is part of what we go through. I kid you not, my, my, son, my son's in Virginia, and, uh, and, and he's been pulled over at least, I think, I know of two times, maybe even three times. And, and every time he's pulled over, he's, 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 he, he knows that he's been covered in prayer. But let me tell you what frightens me. He, he got three little ones now. And if the church don't get this covering and covenant right, how many of you know what happened to that 29-year-old Tyree, uh, what's his last name? Nichols could happen to any of our children. If we don't keep them covered in prayer. And if we don't do like Nehemiah did, amp up our prayer life, that it could happen to anybody in here. And so we keep family covered. If you're a member of this church, we keep your family covered and your children covered. So when the enemy, when Gestapo stop you, surely goodness and mercy shall follow. All the days. He prepareth a, when Gestapo stop you, he prepareth a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And as much as the devil want to take you out, he can't take you out. Because you're covered in prayer. Come on, give God a praise. Covered in prayer. We're, we're covered in prayer. So this message uh, today, just for a few moments, I want to talk about restoring the walls. I want to, I want to kick off on the, I want to end Nehemiah, but I want to tell you about this suffering. Restoring the walls of the family, church, and the community. That's my heart. I'm telling you, the family, the church, and the community. I, nothing else. That, that's the purpose. That's my purpose in life. Family, church, and community. And uh, restoring those walls, those, those walls that have been broken down, those bridges that have been breached, those things that have been torn apart in our family, in our church and community. There is a word, word and there is an answer to restoring those walls. So I want to start at, at verse 12. And I'll read for King James. I got a little NIV. 
and I got a little uh, New Living Translation, but for your hearing, I'll jump back and forth. I want to read from King James. I want to read from King James. Starting at verse 12 of 1 Peter chapter 4. Everybody got that? Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, just hold them up. I like, I like the look of Bibles in the church. Just hold your Bibles up. Look at that. Look at, look at the Lord. Look at, thank you. Look at Mike holding his phone up. That, you know, he's, that's your Bible. That's your Bible. Hope you don't drop a call, but that's your Bible. Um, it's, here's what he says. Peter's speaking to the, a persecuted church, and he's simply saying, Beloved, think not strange concerning the fairy darts, which is to try you. you we, how many of you know we're tried on every hand? Inside the house, outside the house, children, teachers, neighbors. On every hand, the devil will try you. Who do you think you ought to think you're not going to be tried by the devil? But the Bible says that think not of this strange that when you see what you've seen on the 6 o'clock news, as though something strange thing had happened to you. Here's what he says. This is an interesting word. It says, but rejoice. It even give you a comma right there to give you time to shout. When it happened to you, rejoice. Do what the old folks say, thank you, Lordy. The Bible says, re re rejoice. Why do I rejoice? Here's why. In so much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, yeah. I'm part of the family of God. And if he suffered because of righteousness, guess what's going to happen to you and I? We're going to suffer. Because of righteousness. And when his glory shall be revealed, that you may be glad also with exceedingly joy. When the Lord come back, listen, the Bible says when his glory is revealed, when he come back in the last day, he said, that's going to be a great shout. You may be seated. Farmers, and I'm cutting across here because I got maybe 10, 15 minutes. Farmers who live off the fat of the land, a lot of them farmers, a lot of, a lot of them, they'll tell you that they don't have an automatic irrigation system like most of y'all got for y'all front yards. Farmers who live off of the cows, the milk, and live off the fat of the land, they, they have to, they have to, you know, in, in order for the crops to grow, how many of you know you need rain? So they have to pray and depend on God to send rain for their crops, for their cattle, for their, for their fish in the, in the pond. It would be a terrible thing that a farmer, I, I've never ran into one, but how can you be an atheist and be a farmer and depend on God's rain? Because his living is contingent upon how much rain he get for his living. I, I always say this. I'll, 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 I, tell, I, I tell First Lady this all the time. I say, when I'm 80, I just want to be left alone, go to a country church in the country, because country people live alone in you city folk. People in the country live, did you know that people in the country live alone and folk in the city? Well-known fact. And Mike, all I want to do is just go preach at the country church. You know, in the country, I love the country because they have church every other Sunday. When I'm 80, I, 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 just, I just want to go and, 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 and enjoy country people tell me what to do in the church. And if they would just let me teach Sunday school once a month, I'd be okay because they only go to church every other Sunday. But let me tell you one thing I notice about people in the country. They depend on rain that comes from God. Those of us who have, uh, uh, again, I said it the other day, I said, we, got, we, got, we really got something to shout about. People don't understand why black folk don't shout. We shout, let me remind y'all why you, since, let me remind you why you shout. You shout because you drive in cars you've never driven before. You live in it, you live it. Go, look, go back and look at those black and white pictures in that album at your mama house. 
in that in, where everybody was skinny. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. We didn't drive new car, at least we didn't. Maybe y'all did. We were poor. We were poorer than the poor folk. And, and now when you look around, and I grieve over this, now when you look around, our children will never know the life we lived with just beans and bread. I, I used to go to... Uh, a first lady's house on the south side. My father-in-law used to tell us all the time, I know y'all live in Arlington. He said, now, all we eat over here is beans and bread. And if you want something to eat, go look, go look on the oven and get you some beans and bread because I know I, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't got all what y'all got over there. What he was telling us, uh, and, I'm gl and I'm glad I had that experience with not only my parents but other older parents, they were appreciative to the beans and bread that they had. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I told Deacon Jackson, I said, if I, am, if I do eat some pinto beans, I got to have some meat in my beans. I have some ground meat up. Go get me a piece of chicken or something. I got to have some meat. He said, no, boy, get you some beans, some cornbread, cut your piece of onion off. Your salt joe is already, your salt joe, your bacon is in the beans. And boy, that's all you need. You don't need no meat on the sea. You messing that beans and bread up. Can I, can I remind the church and re remind your house and my house, when we just exist on beans and bread, you didn't see the craziness you see in our community now. We were happy with what we had. We were happy with Jesus alone. And we didn't fight and kill each other and poison each other with this mess you see now. What the Bible say, when it do happen, rejoice. Jump back down because I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. It's, it says in 14, if, you be, if ye be reproached for the same name, for the name of Jesus, happy are ye. If people hate you because of Jesus, you're in a, you, listen, you're in a great place when people don't like you for doing right. When people, when people talk about you because you decided you're going to live a life that chase after God's own heart. As, 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 as drama as David was, here's what God said about David. I know, I, I know he messed up. I know David, David was a man of war. David had blood on his hands. But this is who he is. He's a man after my own heart. David, whatever he did, at the end of the day, he chased after the heart of God. I got in it. God chases in the house today that you can't help but love God. You look around and, and, and you want more, but because you don't have more, you don't trip out about it. How many of you know, can you just thank God for what you do have and stop complaining about what you don't have? My, my, my prayer is that, that I'm praying, I'm, first of all, I'm praying for my family, and then I'm praying for the church, and then I'm praying for the community. God, if all this calls us to drift from you, then maybe you need to take some of all this from us to draw us near to you. Went over somebody here. Went over somebody. If, if driving a better car, living in a better home, having better clothes, if it calls us to, to drift from you and to not pray and to cause you and I to take God for granted, maybe God need to take some of this stuff away from us. Some of y'all couldn't, some of, some of y'all couldn't make it if God tell you to drive a, 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 a 20, uh, 20, 201 car, 20, 2001 car. Some of y'all just got to have a 2020, 22, 20. I just got to have that new car smell. Well, that new car smell costs money. Come on, talk to me, y'all. But just give me something that's going to take me from point A to point B. Not that I don't like new cars because I like new everything. But if it's going to separate me from God, God take it away. See, y'all can't pray that prayer. Whatever that's not like you in my life, Lord, take it away. 
If it's, listen, if it's the cars that I drive that I put before you, Lord, take it away. If it's the home that I worship that I put before you, I can't give you glory in the house that you've given me. Lord, take it away. If it's my, if it's the living that I'm trying to live, Lord, take it away. If there's, it, this is for mature audience only. If there's anything not like you, take it away. Well, listen, if it's not like him, it's like the devil. Ain't no in-between. So the prayer that, 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 that Nehemiah prayed and what, what Paul is telling the church is suffering. And see, some of us, go and, we go home and sit and put our head down on the pillow just because somebody says something bad about us. I told, when, when Re Regina and I first started pastoring and we had Jacob, and Jacob is very light complexed uh, uh, skin. And Regina and I, you know, we look at us, you look at us, look at Jacob and say, well, wait a minute, where, where did he get that from? And we went home and started crying they one time and said, that don't look like, that don't look like the first lady and pastor son. That's another baby. We had some folk in the church, and Regina don't probably remember this, but I almost started crying. But you know what the Lord reminded me of? Listen, don't be upset because them folks said that. You done put your mouth on some folk. Y'all, can y'all be real to me with me? The Bible says rejoice in your time of suffering when people talk about you. Even if it's about your children, learn to rejoice. So after I got over all what I seen on the 6 o'clock news, after I got over all that, and I began to get in my word, the first thing that I rejoiced about, if you're taking notes, I must amp up my prayer life. I must have a serious, yeah, yeah write that in your Bible, amp up my prayer life. You know, you know uh, we have to pray like we've never prayed before right now. We, we do. We, 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 we have at the... At, the next, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, this whole sanctuary will be open for prayer from 8 to 1 o'clock. And we're going to have worship music because we believe that when, when the people of God come together and pray, we believe that God hear our prayers. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous avail it much. So this, this season uh, for you and I, God is saying, really, your prayer life need to be an in, it need to be an increase on your prayer life. Put your cell phone down and pick up your Bible or put it down enough to pray to the Father in heaven. And listen, and don't let your cell phone be the first thing you pick up when you wake up in the morning. You find your secret closet like Nehemiah, like Daniel, like some of the old prophets did, and pray in the name. Listen, that, that cell phone can't save you. And it's a shame you have to talk to the younger generation, but some of us old folk can't go five minutes without our cell phone. Come on, talk to me, y'all. With, with the mindset one time, I thought I lost my cell phone. I started going crazy, y'all. And the Lord reminded me, who's most important? Do you call on me first? So when you go to bed at night, am I the last one? Somebody, I, I got to look, I got to see, I got I to gotta get this last look. No. You and I need to make sure that our prayer life is right with God. So when crazy stuff happening, watch this. You've already been praying to God, so when crazy happened, because it is going to happen, God can hear a familiar voice. God is able to say, is that you again? Crazy? Yeah, I was just with you, Lord, about 10 minutes ago, but something crazy happened, so I'm calling on you again. It shouldn't be that we treat prayer like a spare tire, a prayer. And it, the Bible says men must always pray. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. Don't look at your cell phone without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We're gonna, y'all gonna be mad at me. Uh, we fast during the Easter season. Guess what we gonna fast on? Social media, cell phones. Come on, talk to me, y'all. 
we're going to find out who really, really, really loved the Lord. I can't do without that. Well, I can't do without the Bible. And so the Bible says that, uh, let it be a, a, a reproach. It says, in the part of, in, look at verse 14 again. Happy are you in the spirit of the glory that God rested upon you. This is why I'm happy, because the Lord rests upon my life. Because I can pray to a God in heaven. No matter what I see on TV, I know God got my children all across this nation covered in prayer. I don't fall out with God. I don't say I'm mad at God. I don't say white people did this. I don't say any of that. I pray in the, this, here's, how, here's how the Bible tells us to pray because I don't let nobody pray. You don't pray in the name of Jesus. We pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, Jesus. We pray to God the Heavenly Father, but we always end our prayer in the name of Jesus because that's your way to the ears of God's house. And so, and, and so the Bible says, rest upon, and then, and then the next verse, because I want to get to a part, but 15 is, is what I want you to highlight. But let none of you suffer. We're talking about suffering, right? We're talking about Rebuilding the community, rebuilding the walls of community in the church. The Bible says, if you suffer, do not suffer this way. Which way, preacher? Which way? Do not suffer as a murderer. You say, I ain't killed nobody. When's the last time you put your mouth on somebody? Jesus says, you don't have to physically kill nobody. Jesus said, you can murder folk with your attitude. Somebody can come in. Somebody can come in and have a purpose and have a dream, and have a have a million dollar, have a million dollar uh, idea. And if the wrong person hear them, or if they hear from the wrong person, it can mess somebody's dream up. How many dreams have been murdered over the years because people have said things or they heard things that brought negativity? To their hearts. Watch this. Watch what you say, not only about people, but watch what you say in the presence of your children. You tell a child, you're going to be next president, you're going to be, listen, you're going to be great. You tell that child every morning, you tell it, that's, that's why, that's why I, and I need to do it again. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There was one year I made sure every, every last one of our youth, children, college students got it. One of our college students is about to graduate next year. He said, I put this on, and sent a picture of it, I put this on my dormitory wall in my room. He said, guess what, Pastor? I still got what you sent me. I can do, not some things, but all things. I can't do them on my own accord. Teach them I can only do it through Christ. Where you gonna, where you gonna get to who strengthens me? Tell a child that every day that that child wake up and according to God's word, listen, I don't have to guarantee you, I can stand on God's word, that show me a child that's hearing positivity every day of his life and not this negative stuff that we hear. I'll show you a child that God will raise up to be such a great, whatever God called him to be, he's going to be great in the eyes of God. But if, you, if, if that child is around negativity, if that child is around a bunch of things that we see out in the world. That's how that child would grow up. But the Bible said it, said it right here. Don't murder. Don't suffer because of a murderer. Don't suffer. What else? Uh, or as a thief. Yes, yeah, stealing. Come on. Stealing. See, I don't, it's, been a, it's been a minute since I've been on the railroad. We never had to clock in. But I wish I could tell you that uh, I didn't fall asleep on the job sometimes. That's stealing. Amen. And I had to, re st thank you, stealing time. Well, I was sleepy. Then, then you need to go home and get some rest. Dr. Tony, Anthony Evans says this. He said when he was working for Greyhound Continental Trailways, he said he was, he was, he was a baggage guy. And, and what they used to do was the baggage guy had a scam going, the whole thing. And he, they just hired him. They had a scam going. They, and the scam was, uh, Dr. Evans, you sleep while I work, and then I sleep while you work. And he wasn't going for that. He was in seminary. He was trying to take care of his family. He didn't fall for the scam. He got persecuted for that. Oh, you just Uncle Tom. You, just, you, just, you think you're better than us. Dr. Evans says, 
uh, that scam went on for better than a year, and he was a student at, 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 at Dallas Theological Seminary. He said he was a student there, and he said about a year later, supervisors came and raided the place and pulled all those cameras down. He said, and the cameras showed that everybody was falling asleep, stealing time like some of us. Quit acting like you ain't never stole no time. Leaving work early, but him. And here's what he said. Because of his faithfulness, he became the supervisor. How many of you know God will promote you when you walk right in the presence of God? No matter who's looking. God will. Bible says, humble yourself. And humble means, necess it, it really means I'm going to do right whether anybody's. Humbleness has a lot to do with your integrity, who's looking or who's not looking. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I want to be exalted. I want to be high. I want to be, listen, if you humble yourself, he will exalt you and your gift will make room for you. Quit trying to make yourself the CEO and learn how to pick up some paper and learn how to get a broom and learn how to do what your job tell you to do. And when you do that, God will elevate you. God will promote you. God will bless your life. We, we go on the job thinking, they owe me. Nobody owe us nothing. And by the way, you don't want to get, you don't want what you really deserve. Because what you're telling Grace is, Grace, I don't need you. I, I want what I deserve. No, no, no. You, you need, how many of you know, we need Grace. We need grace when we don't deserve it. We need grace when we do deserve it. We need grace when we're asleep at night. The first thing is, I got to amp up my prayer life. So when times like this happen, I'm already in God's listening ear. How many of you know God has a listening ear? His ears are attentive to our cry. Jeremiah 33 put it like this, call on the Lord. And what will he do? He'll answer. And he'll show you and I great and mighty things that we know it not. Don't you know that there are, there are times in my midnight hour, I get up and I don't, it's not just to use the bathroom, but I have to call on the Lord sometimes. I have to walk around the house. I'm, I'm not just checking doors. I'm calling on the Lord. I'm telling God, thank you in my midnight hour. Way in the middle of the 3 o'clock a.m., I'm looking at what God have done for me. I'm stumbling over shoes that where I got too many. I'm looking at clothes that, that's in the closet that won't fit anymore. I'm looking at cars in my driveway that everybody got a car to drive and keys to the car and automatic starters on the car. I'm looking at the goodness of God and all that he done for me and I don't need trouble to come my way. I can just thank him because he deserved to be thanked. How many of you know he deserved and desired to be praised? You can't appreciate that till you've been on your sick bed. Do I need to remind you all of three shouts? I'm shouting because I had COVID and God healed me. I'm shouting because I didn't get COVID and God protected me. I'm shouting because I'm among all the folk who had it and didn't have it. And here I am still in the land of the living today. I'm going to stop and just shout. I'm, I'm going to stop and just tell the Lord, thank you. I can look to my left and tell the Lord, thank you for that. Look to the right and say, thank you for my children. Look ahead and say, thank you for my future. Where I am, he brought me. Who I am, he made me. Where I'm going, he's going to take me. I can look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I don't have to think about how much I love him. I can shout. And by the way, if you missed last week, we learned a new word last week. And if God's been good to you, this week you ought to take your phone out and text 10 people. Yeah, textify. 10 people and tell them, yeah, textify. 10 people and tell them the goodness of God. Yeah, yeah, you texted everybody else. But why don't you text textify, textify, textify 10 people and tell them the goodness 
blessings of the Lord. What do I tell them, preacher? Tell them God's been good. What do I tell them, preacher? Tell them God woke me up. I'm in my right mind. What do I tell them, preacher? I looked over in the children's room the other night and they were still breathing. Yeah, they, they were breathing. They were still in the land of the living. What else, preacher? I can testify that, listen, I testify that I drove on the freeway without a, a 18 wheeler jackknifing on me. God have brought me home safe and sound. And if I can't testify anything else, I can testify this. Through many dangerous toils and snares, I've already come. And that old word, grace, keep coming up. Old man, grace that brought me safe thus far will lead me home. The Word of God want you and I to know that we have a covenant commitment, number two, with God. Be seated. Be seated for a second because I want, I want you to get this. A covenant commitment. Somewhere in Peter, uh, the Bible says, ye are a chosen generation. Everybody don't have that privilege. A royal priesthood. Everybody don't have that privilege. A holy nation. And here's my shout. I brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Why did I do it? So that you can show forth praise. I think the church sometimes we miss our shout. We don't know when to shout or when to tell the God. When you read the word of God, listen, I brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light so that you can show forth my praise. I don't have to have a Thanksgiving dinner to tell the Lord thank you. I can thank him when I go to Papa Do's. I can thank him when I go, watch this, I can thank him when I, when I go down the street and, and eat at the local uh, coffee shop. I can, and here's where I can really thank him. I can thank the Lord because I can look over at another table and tell the waitress, hey, I'm picking up that ticket. And the reason why I can pay somebody else ticket, I can remember when the Lord paid my ticket. I can remember when he picked up my tab. I can remember when he left me a tip. I, God has been so good to us sometimes if you sit down and think about all the goodness that the Lord have done for you, you can't help but tell it. Tell it in the morning. Tell it in the noonday. Tell it in the midnight hour. You can't help but tell the Lord thank you. Because it's a covenant commitment. I don't have to be committed just on holidays. How many of you know he's good all the time? Yeah. Bible says to bless the Lord. Thank you. Somebody been to be to you at all times. And his praises shall, con my time is up, shall continually be in my mouth. I'm, I'm getting out of here. Let me get out of here. But, 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 but that's, a, that's, that's, that, that's something you need, you need to know before I, I leave here today. The reason why I stay on fire for God. I met a guy here. He just joined here. He said, Pastor, do you wake up sometime and all you think about is Jesus? I said, man, yeah, you too? Not that I'm a super saint, but I can remember the songs. And, and I, I, I'm a, I, I grew up in choir. And, and sometimes when I, even, when, when, when I can't even think of nothing to do, I can always sing a song. Even when the devil is on me, I, I, can, I can utter trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime. Anybody with me? But in the midnight hour, I lay awake at night. You, you probably have some of you young folk ain't been there. I lay awake at night. Because I'm thinking about the trouble that was in my way. That's why I lay awake at night. And I conclude that's all right. Because somebody that's bigger than my trouble is named Jesus. He'll fix it after a while. He'll fix it in the morning. He'll fix it in the noonday. He'll fix it in my midnight hour. Got to get out of here. But I want to let somebody know that I am a living testimony. Could have been dead and out of here. But Lord left me alone. And I want to let somebody know that I am a living testimony. And what you see now ain't me. It's God that is within me. Greater is he that is within me 
than he that is in the world. Is there anybody here can testify that God is good in the morning? <laughs> He's good in the noonday. He put food on my table. He's my bridge over the troubled waters. You can't appreciate this shout until you've been through something. Somebody say, preacher, I've been through something. I've been through the storm. I've been through the rain. I've been through the trouble. But God showed up in my midnight hour. He showed up in the hour Paul and Silas had no music, couldn't see, it was dark. And he began to dance even in the dark. God want to know, can you dance in your dark? Can you shout in your midnight hour? Can you give God glory? If you can, you ought to rise, shine, and give God the glory. If he's been good to you, just wave your hand. Tell the Lord, thank you. Listen one more time. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Bless his wonderful name. All standing at this time. Word, what a word, what a word, what a word. I was always told when you get a good meal, you leave a tip. When you get a good meal, you leave a tip. That was a good meal. It's time to all it's time to time to time for the offering. Give what you can. Give what from your heart. Give from your heart. That's all it's about. Giving from your heart. We understand the life we live, the times we're in, but give from your heart. And I just want to just say to everybody in the sanctuary, pray over your kids. Pray over your kids. Pray, just pray over your family because that young man that got beat was two blocks away from his house. And he's the second person. And a guy told me yesterday at work, he said, the last thing a person says or thinks about when he's about to die is his mom. George Floyd cried out to his mom. The young man yes, the other day that got murdered in, in Memphis cried out to his mom. Just pray over your kids. That's all you want to do is pray over your kids, pray over your family. And when you get pulled over, now you know to stop because it was a traffic stop and obey. So the ushers will, you know, they will lead you out, uh, out the doors. But I want to pray the pray the, uh, a prayer right now uh, because this means so much to me. Father God, just thank you for the time that we have. We don't take this for granted. We can't take life for granted. And Father God, thank you for the word that brought, was brought forth. Thank you for our pastor and pastor's wife. Thank you for all the deacons. Thank you, thank you as we leave this place, but never from your grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You are now in the hand of the ushers.